Hi, first of all, sorry for my voice again. Now, this is another video where I show a new model which I bought from Diamond Select slash Art Asylum. And as you have seen, it's the USS Enterprise NCC 1701 standard TV show version. This is the last one which I was interested in. And this is the box. Warning, choking hazard. Great, sounds are still working. Now this is my reflection in the box. It was a center prize NCC 1701 16 inch starship. As you can see, it was released for the 40th anniversary of the franchise nine years ago. Now, again, the standard box as on all the previous models. And again, my reflection with the camera. This is the big side of the box. Again, the standard box, which was also used for the previous versions. And promotion material for other releases. Some facts about the ship. If you want, you can pause it and read the text, but... To boldly go where no one has gone before... It's a pity they didn't release a 50th anniversary edition of all these ships. I would definitely buy them. Because now I have to search for them on eBay and they can get really really expensive. Pictures from the TV show. Enterprise 16 inch starship. Diamond Select Art Asylum, if I'm correct, Diamond Select manufactured it and Art Asylum designed it. You can see the top of the box is really dusty, it's how it came from America, where I bought it on American eBay. Now it's time to open the box and time for me to speed it up. Now this is the wonderful model. Again there is uh, the typical diamond select stand which everybody hates. The ship itself and an alternate battery cover and the standard instruction manual celebrating 40 years available now again some promotional material for other figures and the USS Enterprise E, which maybe one day I will also try to get, but that's not my priority. And the uh, original series figures, Captain Pike in his chair, Captain Kirk. And the instruction manual.
bed replacement. Battery safety information. Now there is the try me mode and the play mode. Again, pressing the bridge dome activates the sounds. And this is the ship. The wonderful ship. Now it's time to get it out of the box. This time I was more successful and managed to not damage it. And the uh, Enterprise is out of the box, almost. Close above the saucer section. There is that alternate battery cover. And a closer look at the ship itself, finally out of the box. And you can see it's really similar to the two previous models I, di I did videos about. Now it's in the try me mode, so... Okay, there are two small problems. The first one is here. And the second one is the huge scratch here. a pity but it's a nine year old model and these two parts are not very well holding together not sure which glue they used or whatever but it looks like it's going to peel off sorry okay ah uh, the bussard collectors don't have any more the spiky things on them but otherwise the nacelles look the same, including the paint job. Uh, the main hull again looks to be the same, including the problematic red paint. Not sure if it's intentional, if it's intentional it looks really strange, I don't really remember it being on model. And you can see the new hangar bay doors. Again, the two parts are not very well holding together. The new impulse engines. Close up of the nacelles and the new balls at the ends of them. But overall it looks like a very nice representation of the actual filming model which was used for all the three seasons of the original series. Now you can see also the deflector dish is a bit smaller than it was on the previous version. And this is the battery cover. Now, again one screw is holding it. And after using a lot of force and a bit of violence, I managed to get it out. And these are the batteries. And you can see it's in the try me mode, so it's time to switch it to play mode. Time to show the sounds.
This is the lights on feature and it looks absolutely wonderful. Despite some of the constructional problems which I showed you, I am really really happy with this one. And it's time to actually compare all the three versions. So you have on the left the cage version, and in the middle it's the where no man has gone before version, and on the right is the standard version. Let's first compare the saucer sections. The cage version, where no man has gone before, you can see the black stripes on the sides. The text is still misaligned on both versions. And uh, these holes were painted white for the second version. Let's compare it to the final version. The white paint is gone and the text is centered. At least mo more centered than it was before. Also the black stripes are gone. And one thing which you cannot see from the angle is that the bridge section has a window on the Where No Man Has Gone Before version. This is the comparison of the uh, Bussard collectors. The first two versions have these spikes and... But otherwise than that, the nacelles look really similar and the ships from the sides look also basically the same. It's a pity I didn't film the window, sorry for that. Now the final version doesn't have the spikes and this is the view of, of the there are those uh, impulse engines. This is how they looked on the Where No Man Has Gone Before version. And they were again redone for the TV show version. Now these are the the end parts. I'm sorry I have no idea how to call them of the nacelles. They were redone for the second version and later redone again for the TV show version. Now from the this side you can see the deflector dish uh, was also changed on every single version. It's the smallest on the TV show version and probably the biggest on the Where No Man Has Gone Before version. At least it looks like it's slightly bigger than on the cage version. So that's all for now. Hope you like this.